Hello and welcome to another Wannabe Entrepreneur Podcast. Everyone, the podcast about what's really like to bootstrap a company. My name is Tiago and today I have a cool episode for you. Much cooler than the previous episode, but not as cool as the next one. Huh? <laughs> what will I talk about? I will talk about pricing and like an eureka moment I had around this topic. I think you will really, really enjoy this. I'll speak about how I maim, I maim, <laughs> oh my God, I cannot even speak. How I'm able to make money with the indie lottery even before the website is up and running. So this is really, really exciting. I already made some money out of it and I will tell you how. And uh, last but not least, speak about just a tiny bit about the community and what's happening around there and some cool bots that I've been making. So a lot of makers talk, a lot of indie hacking talk. And uh, yeah, I think it will be a really fun episode. So let's get started. As you know, I absolutely love traveling. It's something that I'm really, really passionate about. I love getting out of my comfort zone and explore new food, new people, a new whole country. It's it's really, really amazing. I love it. And as you can see, I really love food as well because it was the first thing I said, exploring new food. Anyways, one of the most exciting and challenging trips I've done was when I went to India. I visited India. I got invited by a friend to go. And at first I thought, okay, that's really, really cool, but I'm not going. It's too short notice or it's too crazy, it's too expensive. But then I was able to get a group together and we did. We flew to India, we only had 10 days, and definitely we tried to fit in too much into those days. It's a huge mistake, and if you're a traveler yourself, you probably know what I'm talking about. When you're spending so much money into a plane ticket, you just want to do everything, but that's a mistake. Anyways, we have done that. So one thing about India in comparison with Portugal is that Portugal has 10 million inhabitants, whereas India has 1.3 billion I know, I know, it's, it's a much bigger country, but it's still a, a huge scale. There's a lot of people. And because of that, the dynamic of living there is completely different. One thing that you will notice as a European or Western person, I don't know if you can say that, anyways, is that they look at you as an ATM, a way to get a lot of money. And... Of course, that there's a lot of people there, and uh, most of them are really, really nice, but there are also people trying to scam you, try to collect as much money as they can. And to be fair, for you, it doesn't really affect because it's like one more euro or 50 cents more for a product that you're paying. And, and that's nothing. I mean, 50 cents is nothing. But what is really annoying is feeling scammed, feeling that just because you don't belong there, you have different prices and someone is trying to get uh, trying to take advantage out of you and that's of course really really frustrating so since i really always want to be as native as possible i was convinced that uh, i would never get scammed and i was always very aware every time someone would come and um, give me a price i was trying to bargain i was trying to compare multiple prices my friend uh, abby from media was always there so i was always like checking in on, on him and he would always tell me okay don't do this don't do that so i was really convinced okay I know this, I won't get scammed. I don't want to get scammed. So I was, again, very, very aware. Then, after the trip, we went to the airport. And uh, we're exhausted because, it's, again, 10 days, we've done so, so many things. And we decided to have a beer. Okay, let's sit down, go to the bar, grab a beer. And uh, I believe we got uh, Kingfisher. In India, there's two main brands of beer. It's Tiger and Kingfisher. And... Uh, once you, you taste German beer, all the rest will taste like water, by the way. Like, German beer is the best. So, I'm not a huge fan. Anyways, continuing with this. I I went there and I asked for the beer and I said, okay, here it is. It's like a normal bottle and it's six euros. And I paid and I sat down and I was drinking and I thought, whoa, six euros for a beer? This is absurd. This is more expensive than in Europe. And this is certainly much more expensive than any beer that I would order outside of the airport here in India. So, funny enough, 
where I ended up being the most scammed was in the airport. But here, I didn't feel like I was being scammed because I just accepted that in the airport, the prices are higher and this is a control environment. So no one is trying to take advantage of me. This is, of course, a huge mistake because probably in the airport is where they kind of quote unquote legally scam you the most. But it really makes me think about the, the value, the monetary value that we attribute to products. A great other example is buying wine. I, again, prefer beer to wine, but I like a good wine. And here in Portugal, there's tons of great wine. When you go to the supermarket, you have a lot of different prices, of course, a lot of different varieties. And since I don't know anything about wine, I use pricing as a quality measure. So here, by the way, in Portugal, the wine is, is quite cheap. So I know that in between two to five euros is kind of a cheap, okay-ish wine. And then from uh, five to, let's say, 10 or 15, is it's already good, reasonable wine. And then more than 15 is already a good wine, a wine that you want to bring to an event or to a party. You want to give it as a gift, right? So 20 bucks, it's quite a lot for, for one bottle of wine. And... That's how I measure the quality of it. I don't know anything about it. Maybe I'm paying 20 bucks for something that is terrible, but I don't know. And we use money as a measure of quality quite often in any product, right? You are buying a cell phone, for example, or a car, and you know, okay, if you're paying more, it's probably because you're paying for more quality. It's really interesting to think about how certain things, let's say, for instance, we would not think twice on paying six euros for a beer or 10 euros for a burger. But then if someone is trying to sell you an app for one euro and you get access to this app for basically ever, you won't pay. You say that one euro is too much. Why is this? I, I know this, this is changing and more and more people know that the internet is not free and it's better to pay than being the product itself. But it's still really, really hard. And I, I'm always super frustrated because with my community, it's only 10 bucks, which I think it's a very, very fair, fair price. I want to sell this to bootstrappers anyways. So I wanted to make it cheap, accessible, and I think I've nailed it. This is really a great, great price. However, it's still hard to convince people to buy it. But if we compare this price with info products, there's info products, which are basically notion guides and PDFs and stuff like that and books that you can People pay just like 50 bucks and sometimes they never open it. It's crazy, but they do it. Why is this happening? Recently, I had like my Eureka moment. Uh, I finally realized that there's more than price when you are pricing or there's more than money when you're pricing a product. And I know it seems a bit weird, but hear me out. Let's take an example of a gym versus a burger. And I always compare a gym with my community because it's basically the same. My community is a gym for indie makers. So a gym, you go with the goal of getting fit, losing weight, exercising. And well, I guess the burger is quite the opposite, right? You just want to have the satisfaction of eating a burger. So you pay 10 bucks. You don't think even twice. You don't, you don't feel that you are being scammed. You just pay 10 bucks. And in the next five or 10 minutes, you'll have the burger ready to be eaten. And you immediately have that satisfaction, that dopamine. You immediately have what you paid for. With a gym is different. If you want to, let's say, lose five kilos, it will take a long time for you to reach there, right? It really depends on you as well. So what is the difference? You, you both have a goal, but in, in one way, you, your goal is immediately achieved. The other way is not. Is that the reason? Is that why people prefer paying 10 bucks for a burger rather than 10 bucks for a gym? Because the burger, you have immediate satisfaction. Mm, let's think about a trip, for example. When, when you buy a trip, you, you know that the trip will only happen in... Uh, let's say one month, two months, three months, even more sometimes. Does this prevent you from buying that plane trip? No, because normally actually it's an enabler because you know the prices will be cheaper. So it's not the time that you have to wait that actually may, like interferes with the price. So what is it? And this is like, it's crazy. It seems so obvious for me now, but it took me really a long time to understand this. It's really the commitment that you have to put to take the value 
out of what you're buying. So let's think about the commitment on buying a burger. You or an info product. You buy it and that's it. You just have to wait. And then in 10 minutes, you have your burger. In, in like one minute, you have your info product and that's it. You can immediately start consuming it. You immediately have what you paid for, as I said before. But in a gym, it's completely different. In the gym, you want to lose five kilos. You pay for this membership. Let's say you pay 10 bucks. But then you need to go to the gym. And you need to go to the gym once, twice, thrice per week. This is another commitment. This is another way you need to pay. You, you are paying not necessarily to the gym, but yeah, you are committing your time to it. So there's a new formula, a new formula to come up with the pricing of a product. A pricing of a product is the monetary price that a person pays plus the commitment that this person needs to make to get the value out of what they are buying. So now let's say you don't like going to the gym. You hate it. It's, it's really a pain for you to go there and do all these exercises. You feel anxious. You don't want to go. Then the pricing for this membership is not only the 10 bucks. You don't even care for the 10 bucks. You just think about the two, three, four, 10, 20 hours you'll need to spend there do something that you don't like. And of course that you can translate this to money as well. You can think, okay, one hour doing what I don't like values 20 bucks. So then if you're spending five hours, it's already plus 50 bucks. So I think this is something that we need to have in consideration when we are pricing our products. So how do we solve this? That's the question. You want to get clients that get immediate satisfaction when they buy your product. So in the case of the gym, you need to have people that really enjoy going to the gym. The fact of getting there and, and smelling that machine and sweat and, and going there and meeting people and, and swimming and, and doing uh, weights and everything is something that brings them satisfaction. This guarantees that they will get the satisfaction of what they're paying much, much sooner. This is so obvious now, isn't it? But I don't know, it's, it took me so long to understand this. If now I take this as an example and apply it to my community, there's two types of people or two types of goals when you join the community. One, you want to make money with your products. You want to reach ramen profitability, right? And do you know what ramen is? It's basically the minimum amount of money you need to make to pay your bills. So that's what I always thought People wanted. That's what I, I thought I was selling. But then I, I started asking around to all the members. And even though that, that's their goal as an indie maker, of course, they want to make money. They want to reach this RAM and profitability. It's not their goal for being the community. They were in the community to meet people, to get accountability, and to have feedback. And when I asked, do you think that this will get you closer to your goal of reaching RAM and profitability, most of them said, I don't know, maybe, possibly. This got me so, so confused because I, I thought I was selling one thing and people were buying the other thing. But now it all makes sense. They are people that really enjoy the social aspect of meeting other indie makers, of the process of building something. And that they can get from day one of joining the community. They don't need to wait one year until they get their profitable business. They can pay 10 bucks per month and immediately start getting the value they want, which is the social value. And that's exactly the same for the gym. People that like going to the gym, they pay for it. And the, tomorrow or even the same hour, they're having the value of basically enjoying the gym. That's the kind of clients you want. You want clients that will have satisfaction also with the process so that they don't value each hour they spend using your product as something that they don't want to do. I think try to apply this to your product. If, if you have a product, no matter what it is, try to think about how long it will take for a person to get the full value of the product. And to be honest, this can also happen with info products, right? When you have a guide, a PDF with 10 pages or a YouTube video, for example, people can pay five bucks to get access to this video, but then they still need to spend, let's say, 30 minutes watching it and paying attention. 
So, you know what I mean? If you don't really want to watch the video, why would you pay for it and then spend one hour doing so? Like, you need to kind of change your pricing accordingly. Another, and this is the last example. If we take the gym membership, normally gym memberships could cost 20, 30 bucks, at least here in Portugal per month, which is quite, a, quite okay, right? But again, you need to think it's 30 bucks plus the time people spend in the gym. If I don't like spending time in the gym, what I can do if I want to sell this to you is I can reduce the membership. And let's say if it's five bucks or one euro, then you'll think, okay, it's just one euro. So one euro plus the time I need to spend in the gym, but one euro is nothing. So the likelihood of people buying is higher doesn't mean that these are your right customers. And as I'm saying this, I'm thinking that maybe it makes sense as well to like just increase the price of my community because if I do so, I make sure that I have the people that are satisfied by the social aspect of it and they merely get value out of it. Anyways, something to think about. I hope I was kind of clear with my explanation. I tried to tweet this and people just didn't get it. But uh, yeah, I think it, it makes uh, total sense. And that's it for my knowledge of the day, introduction of the day. And I, I don't want to elongate this episode much longer. I just want to give you a quick update on what I've been up to. So this week, I've been, uh, well, I've been super, super busy, <laughs> to be honest. First of all, trying to get a job, right? You, you know this. It's something that I, I should be putting more time into it. But uh, I still, maybe I'm spending, I, I don't even want to say around, what, 10, 20 minutes per day. Anyways, my, what I've done so far was scheduling this conversation. I think I told you already, I will have tomorrow conversation about a possible position to be a fractional CTO in a startup, which, I mean, sounds super, super exciting. The fact that I can do this because I will be testing myself. It's, it's a special an area that I really like. It's startups. It's a job that seems perfect because I don't need to work the full week, but it's a job that will require like commitment. I cannot just after, let's say a month, quit and just focus again full time in my projects. Once I decide to be a fractional CTO, I need to at least maybe give it a year or so. So something to think about. Tomorrow is the meeting. I don't even know if I'll get it. I don't even know what's the pricing. The pricing. Going back to the pricing. I don't even know what's the paycheck. So I, I will let you know after that if I'm allowed to. I don't know. But I'll, I'll at least give you uh, an update on this. Besides that, interviews. Exciting interviews coming up in this podcast. I will interview Simon Oiberg, the founder of uh, FeedHive. Super exciting. He has more than 100,000 followers on Twitter, plus a lot of other thousands in all of the other social networks. So that's basically what I've also been doing in this uh, past week and this week, kind of preparing the interview. The interview will be on Friday. So super exciting about that. I also have other interviews coming up. So for you, the listeners, I know that you prefer like listening to the interviews than listening to me. I know it's sad, but at least there's much more views or listens. So I will do that and this thursday there's already an interview that will be out for you and then probably the next thursday and the other one there's also interviews including the one with simon so super excited about that at the same time i've been uh, kind of cutting down the interviews into snippets since i'm now recording also the video and posting on youtube and it seems that there's people that really enjoy it because i'm getting some feedback on twitter of people saying that they really like it so this is something that you know it's a lot of work and it took me a while to start doing so, even though a lot of people suggest me since the beginning to do this. But uh, yeah, now I'm doing it, I'm sharing it, and it's bringing some results. Besides that, all my episodes are also being uploaded to YouTube. So yeah, if you don't like Spotify or whatever app, you can just listen on YouTube as well. What else? What else? What else? What else? Oh yeah, super cool. Indie Lottery. Indie Lottery. Oh... I have some good, interesting news for you. As you know, and I really hope you know, I've been working with João in the Indie Lottery, which is this project where you basically, its I like to call it a no marketing tool. What does this mean? 
It means that you just have to basically paste there your website and we'll do the marketing for you, quote unquote. Uh, and the goal of, or, or like the core of the Indie Lottery is that every day we select one random participant and we send to all the other participants. When I first shared the MVP, it was really ugly. It took me like one day to do it, but people really liked it. So since then, I have... I think we have now 170 participants and people, they don't drop out. They really like it. So we want to invest more on this. And I really want to make a good product and Juan as well. So Juan is a designer and is really strict. So he has made this absolutely beautiful design and he keeps telling me, Tiago, I want it to be exactly like this. And my approach is like, yeah, but I just want to launch it and see how people think. So now we are kind of finding this compromise and I keep telling him, like, no, you know, that's how people do it. They just, like, release fast. But I also understand his point of view, which is, like, let's release something that is good, right? We need the minimum. So I think in the end, we are we have, are having a good balance uh, between each other. And uh, I'm super excited to launch this. And uh, I actually already sold and make money with this project. Can you believe? Yes, it's been uh, more than a year since I started my indie hacking career, and now I'm able to do pre-sales. Let me just say that this would have never happened in the beginning. Without an audience, I would have never had people paying me without even understanding what they are paying for. So that's definitely something that changes. Once you get an audience, it's much easier to kickstart things. So our idea is that in our website, plus in the newsletter, we'll have featured products, these are products of people that not only paid to be there, but also gave a discount. So now it's great for the consumers, people that consume the newsletter, because they will have a discount. And it's great for us because we'll get money. And it's great for the sponsors because they will get attention. What I've done was I basically did like a print screen of how it would look like. The website is not even up, by the way. And I went on Twitter and said, hey, we are now selling four slots for the first week of launching, which will be the best week because we'll share it around. What do you think? Like, who wants to pay? And so far, we already, I think in the first two days, four people were interested. So that's around 80 bucks. And uh, yeah, really cool. I mean, making money already. And of course, that this is really nice, but it puts extra stress because I need to finish the product. I need to make sure it's good. I need to collect the money and everything is being done ad hoc. Like I, nothing, there's no process for it. I basically create a Stripe link and send it to them. They pay me and like we communicate over Twitter. I think this is exciting because I know that this is how a lot of the initial startups and indie projects that are now making a lot of money started. But yeah, I will, I'll keep you up to date. So far, I've been like spending a lot of time because I'm using React and using Tailwind and doing this properly. So I've, I've been spending a lot of time in building that product and having meetings with Joao and really exciting, really exciting, but also a lot of work. And then at the same time, the community is still there. So I'm still kind of coming up with features. I created now a super cool bot that basically tags people that are relevant. So let's say that uh, you write a message about coding or something, and I immediately find, I take the keywords, I extract keywords out of your message, and I send this to, or, or I, I basically analyze these keywords, and I tag two people that also have these keywords in their profile, and then I say, hey, Wolfie and Luca are also into coding, maybe they can help here. Hopefully, this will help in boosting the engagement without me being present, which is really what I want. I want to automate the community as much as possible. So far, I think people are satisfied with the bot. It can still be improved. I will let you know how it goes. And uh, yeah, if I basically get more engagement. Again, I, I keep seeing other communities and I, I'm really happy with the engagement in the WB, even though it like fluctuates. Sometimes it's great, sometimes it's not so good. But it's still really, really good in comparison with other communities. So I'm always also thinking, what can I do to bring more people in? Like, I have no idea. So, yeah, I've been also kind of thinking on possible partnerships and sending emails around. Oh, the life of the indie hacker is so many things happening. Also, this week, I probably will be meeting um, Matt from, uh, from Something to Start Up. 
the partner of Mark LG that they they both do this this is a really cool uh, podcast. So I will be interviewing him and we'll be chatting here in the flat like I did with Anthony. So I think that will be really, really cool. So I don't know. There's really a lot of things going on. I also feel that I've been working way too much, but I'm also pumped with adrenaline and motivation. That's it. I hope this was not a very fast and high-paced episode. Now you can take a deep breath, relax, and go back to your week and on Thursday, you'll, well, hear me again, but this time in an interview. Oh, yeah, by the way, now that I think about it, I also got interviewed or invited to be interviewed. Yeah, so I'll be on a podcast as a guest. I'll give you, I don't have any more details, but I'll let you know once I do. And uh, if you want to support me and make sure that this podcast continues to exist... And I continue to exist as an indie hacker. <laughs> this is turning really dark. Yeah, just buy me a coffee. Or you can also become a member of the WB space. 10 bucks per month. You can buy the merch. All these links will be in the description, as you know. There's many interviews, many episodes at wannabe-entrepreneur.com slash episodes. And uh, share this with all of your indie friends. Go indie! All right. This was another wannabe entrepreneur. See you next time. I had to reduce my microphone gain a lot because my neighbors is a drummer or he likes drum, or I don't know, he was making a lot of noise.